This is a short video on the cause of Huntington's disease, which is, of course, a neurodegenerative disorder. This video is going to be covering the genetic basis behind the disease. And uh, before we begin, you can kind of see the two large lesions formed in the brain as a result of Huntington's disease. And we're going to be talking about why these large protein aggregates form. So before uh, we talk about what exactly causes the disease, we need to establish that there are repetitive sequences in the human genome. Um, actually, a small fraction of the human genome actually codes for proteins. A lot of it is repetitive sequences that are used for, for, for several things, such as DNA fingerprinting. Anyway, satellite DNA is a section of repeated base pair sequences. So if this is a section of DNA, we would consider this satellite DNA because it's repeating GCG ATC. GCG ATC. When these satellite sequences are very small, we call them microsatellites, uh, specifically when they're four or less ba base pairs in length. This is an example of a microsatellite where we see CAG, the CAG codon repeated again and again and again. Now these microsatellites tend to be unstable uh, in the in in the replication of DNA and in transcription of the of the DNA. Microsatellites at the beginning of the Huntington gene are shown here. We actually have that CAG sequence that we saw on the previous slide. CAG codes for glutamine, which is, uh, which is an amino acid for which the symbol is GLN. We have several glutamines down here in the beginning of the Huntington gene. This is called a polyglutamine repeat. Now this polyglutamine repeat is unstable because during trans or excuse me during DNA replication the polymerase encoding this GLN can slip forward or slip backwards. If the polymerase slips backwards, we're going to have an expansion, a microsatellite expansion of the polyglutamine tail, the polyglutamine sequence. This is going to cause us to have more glutamines than we originally had. You can imagine that if a polymerase is coding down the sequence and slips backwards, it's going to grab an extra one, an extra glutamine, as it passes over that extra CAG codon. It's also possible for the polymerase to slip forward and kind of make the microsatellite smaller. Um, that is less likely, uh, and that, that occurs less in the cell. So microsatellite expansion is really the unstable process that occurs that causes Huntington's disease. And of course, the severity of the disease depends on the amount of repeats that we have in that sequence. So this would be considered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight repeats shown here. This slide kind of shows us how bad the disease is and how that depends on the amount of repeats. If you have less than 26 repeats, then you're considered normal. You will not be affected and you should not show any risk. You should not, uh, your, your offspring does not have an increased risk of having Huntington's disease. Um, as, of course, as your repeat count increases, you are at intermediate risk and you do have a better chance of passing that off to your offspring. This is kind of, it's kind of like a positive feedback loop. It gets worse with every generation as they continue to, to produce more repeats of that CAG sequence in the genome. Full penetrance is usually considered to be 40 plus repeats where uh, you, the, the, person with that, with that genome will almost certainly be affected. And since this disease is autosomal dominant, there is a 50% chance of passing this, passing this condition on to the offspring.